Every life has a story, and every story is worth sharing. Your story, my story, and our story speak of victory and defeat, joy and sorrow, resilience and vulnerability. They are not just our story, they are Christ's story in us. They are Kingdom Stories from Down Under. My guest tonight has come to the Australian School of Ministry wanting to grow, to mature, to understand more about God, the Bible, and ministry. He's had an amazing journey, and uh, even though he almost gave up, he's up and at it again and finishing <laughs> off his grad dip, and we are so grateful for his commitment to serving the Lord. It hasn't always been easy for him, and tonight he's willing to lay it all out for us at Kingdom Stories from Down Under. It is an absolute privilege to introduce to you Mark Holden. Welcome, Mark. Thank you for having me. <laughs> back at it, eh? Yeah, but, but back to business. Back to business. <laughs> you got the job back and you got the ministry back on, on track as well. Yeah, that's it. Back, 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 uh, back in Australia and back to work again. And, uh, There's something about us wanting to, you know, finish off what we haven't to tie up all the loose ends. Yeah, I've yeah. got a few. Yeah, <laughs> still on the on the list. Yeah, yeah. But it's nice when you get back into it. And it, it is, and um, yeah, so far since I picked my studies back up again, yeah, it's been great to get get back into it again. Um, and yeah, just learning so much, I guess. Yeah. So it's, uh, I need to get it finished. That's the thing. What attracted <laughs> you to study the Bible initially? To study the school of ministry? Um, oh, I think, you know, as you learn more and more of who God is and what he's done, um, the fact that, you know, there's, there's a book there that we can read to get to know him more, to learn more about him, um, there's pretty much got an answer for every of life's questions and difficulties and everything that we struggle with, um, and it's all written down for us to discover and get to know him more. So, yeah, I guess it, it, it was kind of, an old brainer. Um, I'd always wanted to, you know, learn more about God's word and more about Him. So, I mean, it's great, you know. You, you go to the, you go to church on Sundays and you listen to the sermons and on group. Yeah. Uh, but I think by doing more formal uh, study and structure, yeah. Um, that's why you got a lot more out of it and got to go a lot more in depth. Uh, uh, yeah, and learn a lot more. So yeah, it's been great. Wonderful. Yeah. Where did it start from for you in England? Obviously, you were born in England. I was, yeah. I was born in England, um, the, the the north of England, so the small town called Burnley near Manchester. Okay. Um, well, they're not that small. They they have a good team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did all right. I think uh, for a town of you know sixty sixty thousand people, they, they they were doing pretty well to last season when we got relegated. Uh, uh, it's happened a few times, though, up and down, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, and that's very much what it is—a a football football town. That's the uh, the main, I guess, religion of the town <laughs> is football and and BFC Burnley Football Club. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I, I was born there to you know my mum and my dad. Um, I have one one younger brother who's three three years younger than me. Yeah. Uh, and that's the yeah that's where it all all began. Yeah. And. Um, your parents are church people, Bible believing, or not really? Or no, not really. Uh, my mum became a Christian when I was so oh, probably oh, five or six years old, mm -hmm. um, and then not long after that, my, my parents got divorced. And uh, yes, yeah, so I guess that's really where my Christian walk started because as as I was growing up, it, I get I got to see th things from you know both perspectives. So I'd go to my dad's at the weekend. Um, it was very much a non-Christian. Yeah. Uh, so I'd see kind of how he li lived his life and yeah. that worldview. And then we'd come home and we'd go to church on Sunday. Um, you know, my mum was very involved in church. We'd have Bible studies and prayer meetings. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'd go to church every Sunday without, without fail, usually Sunday morning and Sunday night. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I got to see it from both points of view, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then... As I got older, uh, probably when I got to 16, 17, and it, it was time to make my own decision and my own commitment, yeah. um, I started to go to church less and less and get more involved in the uh, the world, I guess, and the, you know, partying, drinking, drinking, yes. uh, drugs eventually, yeah, uh, and that's that's where it all started to 
to go wrong. <laughs> mm. So, um, I mean, I think but probably all, all the way through that, even when I, you know, start to turn away from God um, and decide I weren't going to go to church anymore, uh, I still always knew that that was the the right thing to do. I, I never stopped believing in God. Yeah. I never lost my, my faith at all. I just, you know, wasn't living it. Yeah. Um, and I guess as a young, you know, a, a young man, um, uh, I wanted to explore everything the world had to offer in the the, the partying side and the, the drinking side of things. And um, It was common as well, wasn't it? It was, yeah. I it, mean, once you surround yourself with those kind of people, it's every weekend or every second night. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. I mean, I, I had... Um, you know, I was fortunate enough, I, I did very well at school and I got on working for a, a, a good company. Um, so I was progressing in my work life. What were you doing? I was an engineer for a, a BAE system, so, you know, a large defence company. Mm -hmm. um, so I was progressing well through so that mechanical, side. mechanical, mechanical engineering? Yeah, mechanical, you? yeah, mechanical engineering. Um, so you, you did that as a trade or as a university? No, I did it as a trade uh, initially, and then uh, as I came out of the town, I went into management and yeah, carried on my studies. Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, I mean that was good, and so from that side of things, things were good, you know, yeah. career-wise. Um, uh, you know, things were progressing well, uh, and then uh, every, every weekend, you know, it was just party time. We only did a four-day week, so that made it even worse because you know. We were Monday to Thursday, yeah. so Thursday night with the, the first night out on the town, and then the same again Friday, the same again Saturday, Sunday afternoon. Trying to clean up. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, Sunday, Sunday afternoon station. you're back out, then, you know, in bed for six o'clock maybe, yeah. ready for Monday morning. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Ouch. Yeah, yeah. Wasting pretty much everything you've earned. Uh, pretty much everything, yeah. Just on booze and drugs and yeah, not party. It. Yeah, yeah. So, um, how long did this go for? Years? Oh, probably from, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, six, seven, eight years. Uh, did you meet your wife along the path or not yet? I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. I, I did meet her along the way. She was At a non Christian. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, well, it was the, um, she was the sister of my best friend, actually. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, yeah, it worked out. It, it all worked out in the end. How did you meet her? Uh, yeah, I well, we were partying down down the town. I mean, I, I guess we'd, I'd seen her seen her around um, before that, um, but she's a couple of years younger than me. So mm -hmm. I guess up to that stage, she was just you know it's my more. friend's sister. I didn't think yeah. think much of her. Uh, and then you know one night she came out down the town. I thought, wow, <laughs> when did when did she grow? Up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, from that you know things developed and. Yeah, we started a relationship and uh, had a couple of kids, uh, got married, um, and then on the way, Amy did become a Christian herself. How uh, did you uh, return to, to the Lord, or was it her first, or you? Uh, no, no, it, it was myself, so we, um, uh, I mean, at the time, I was, still, I was still single, so I was, it was November um, 2000, uh, and we'd, we'd been out, we'd uh, just booked a boys holiday to, to Magaluf in Spain yeah. so there was probably like 15, 15 of us out, out on the town we'd been out all afternoon yeah um, yeah we'd had a big big session you know probably 10 or 12 pints in uh, and at that stage I'm not really dabbled with drugs much it was just mainly you know drinking and booze yeah um, uh, so but on this occasion it was a big you know celebration a couple of the lads were having ecstasy tablets, so I thought, yeah, yeah, I'll give it a try. So um, I took a, an ecstasy tablet, uh, and initially, you know, nothing, nothing happened. I thought, well, what's? I don't think, what's I don't think they're working. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, as time went on, probably within 10, 15 minutes or so, I noticed my heart rate started to increase, um, and then I started to get just so hot and just really, really burning up uh, until literally sweat was just pouring down my face back away, stood under a shower, absolutely wet through. That's why it's called speed. Oh, that's it. <laughs> and it. Yeah, it's not good. It weren't good at all. So, uh, Especially with booze. Yeah, and I think that's it with the booze as well, which yeah. dehydrates you. Yeah. Um, and we've been out all day, so it weren't good. So I was stood at the bar and I said, I need... 
you know, a pint of water. So the bar were giving me pints of water that I were literally Stop. down in one after another. Um, and my, my good friend at the time came over and said, look, come on, sit, sit down. I think you're having a, a bad reaction to the ecstasy tablet yeah. that you took. So I sat down on the chair, um, but I knew I thought there's something seriously wrong here. So I could just feel my heart rate going higher and higher and higher, again, otter and otter and otter. I started uh, projectile vomiting, um, and that's when the people around me thought, realise you know, there's something seriously wrong. Yeah. So my friends had us led back in the chair, and when I set up, my eyes rolled into the top of my head, um, and that's when they decided to you know, carry me outside of the pub. It were November in England, so it was very cold outside. Um, and they thought they'd take me outside to cool me down. Um, so that I can remember up to that stage, and they grabbed hold. There were a couple of lads out of each arm. A couple of them got, grabbed hold of my legs. Um, and I can remember my, my best mate, Dean, had hold of my leg. Uh, and I just knew, I thought, that's it. I'm dying. Yeah. It's, it's over. So as he carried me out, I'd, I was staring at him thinking, you know, please call an ambulance. Uh, but I couldn't speak or anything. It, I think yeah. by then I'd, it, it was too late. Um, so they carried me outside and led me on the sidewalk, on the pavement, in the recovery position. Um, about that time, the barmaid had seen what was going on, so she'd call uh, 999 for the emergency services. Uh, and a couple of my friends had ran across the road to the, uh, the takeaway, and they'd done the same thing and called the call the ambulance um, so just as, as uh, God would have it I guess because it yes. was uh, a Saturday night they had a what they call a rapid response unit out, yeah. um, which was based in the town centre uh, and they were just around the corner oh, so, so yeah so literally within a couple of minutes the ambulance was there um, by that time but by the time they they'd arrived I'd already stopped breathing and was yeah, clinically clinically yeah. dead um, so they began CPR on me. They, they asked the guys there, you know, what, what I'd taken, uh, and they gave me some kind of shot to try and jump me back to life. Yeah. Um, so up to that stage, it was just complete uh, darkness. They, you know, there was nothing there at all. Yeah. Um, and I can kind of remember coming round, and I could hear a lot of, you know, screaming and crying. Um, and I could hear the, the, the paramedic saying, come on, Mark, you need to open your eyes. You've got to open your eyes. And no matter how hard I was trying to open my eyes, I just couldn't, yeah. couldn't open my eyes up. Um, and then I heard the paramedic say, no, that's it. We've lost him. We need to get him in the back of the ambulance. So I'm thinking, no, no, I'm here. I'm still here. I can hear you. <laughs> um, but obviously my... The body wouldn't respond. Yeah, the, the, body, the body had stopped and the heart had stopped beating again. Uh, and then that rate again, it just, that rate was all, uh, it all went blank, this yeah. black. Um, so at that, uh, at that stage, the, uh, uh, yeah, the police was involved and they, they, when, well, when I got took to the hospital, um, I stopped breathing again a couple of times on the way and they had to, they had to revive me. So three, three times in total, um, and the, uh, the paramedics and the doctors told the police it's going to be, uh, you know, a death. So the police quarantined the, the place where we've been drinking, uh, won't let anyone enter, anyone exit. Well, they did interviews. And um, as far as they were concerned, they were going to, they were looking into a death from... Yeah, from ecstasy. Off yeah, from course. ecstasy, yeah. Off of those. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so then the, the police were sent out to... to uh, go and find my, my family, my mum, my dad, my brother. Um, they went, got them into the hospital. Uh, and then once they got the family gathered around, they, they, they told my mum that it's, you know, it's not, it's not looking good. Uh, yeah. The doctor said these, well, on, the, on the way there, my heartbeat had got up to over 200 uh, beats per minute. So yeah. literally. Three times. Yeah, beating out of my chest. This, yeah. you know, uh, you were going so rapid. Um, They'd done a number of tests on me by that stage, and they, they said there's very little brain activity. Um, you know, it's not looking good. They, they did something called the Glas Glasgow Coma Scale, which, you know, zero is you, you're clinically dead. 
you know, 15, might be me and you sat here now, if we just had a coffee. Um, and I was down to two or three. So they said, it's not, uh, yeah, it's not looking good at all. So um, uh, the doctor said to, to, to our mum, you know, these, these two options, the two ways it can go. Um, one, we're going to lose him tonight. Um, or secondly, if he does survive, uh, it's going to be severe uh, brain injuries, um, you know, due to the lack of oxygen and the, uh, yeah, what, what's happened. Um, I won't be a Christian, said, so, well, let's see what, God says about that, um, I'm going to I'm gonna get praying. <laughs> so, yeah, so she got, got on the phone to, to the pastors and through the, the network, the network, the prayer network, um, you know, and people, people started to pray. So uh, the pastor, the pastor from the, uh, the church where, where I'd, you know, grown up, he, he came, I'd, probably the first time he'd seen me in oh, four, four years, five years. Um, and he, he he prayed for me, um, yeah. And the prayer team all started praying across the, you know, I guess the northwest of England. Um, and initially, nothing really happened, you know, uh, uh, until things had settled down and my mum was allowed into into the room. Um, I was in the intensive care unit, up to you know every machine imaginable. Um, and my mum my laid her hands on me and were, and were praying, and she noticed that my eyes started to flicker. So she she called the nurse. She said, "I think he's he's coming in. Coming in. Yeah, he's coming around." And nurse said, "Yeah, yeah it's you know, Wishful. it will. There'll be twitches and a bit of movement. Yeah, don't don't worry about it." And then off she went. And so mum carried on praying, and I started moving a little bit more. So she called the nurse again. And I said, "I think he is. He's definitely coming around." And the nurse said, "No, no, it's it's." it's you know, don't worry about it. It's, I mean, I think the nurse is thinking now is the guy's going to die. He's not going to yeah. come back away. Yeah. Um, and then slowly, slowly, over the next 15 minutes, uh, I began, you know, complete consciousness and sat up in bed, tried to take the breathing tube out of my throat. And um, I think I give all the doctors and nurses a fright because <laughs> yeah. that wasn't really supposed to happen. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, within 15 minutes, I was sat up in bed wanting to have a drink of water and um, yeah, we felt completely normal, I guess. I think yeah. probably, if anything, I was still um, under the effects of the alcohol, mm -hmm. but the, the effects of the drugs had just completely uh, gone out of the system, yeah. 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 Um, and so they, all the doctors and nurses were just, you know, flabbergasted yeah. and, and they said, it, <coughs> there's, there's no way we can explain it. It's, you know, it's got to be, it's a miracle. Yeah. Because from the, the tests we'd done and the observations we've made, this shouldn't be happening. It's not, yeah. uh, there's no logical explanation for it. Um, so this stage you weren't married, you were on your own? Yeah, I was still on my own at that stage, yeah. Um, yeah, still, still on my own, young, single, no. Any, any side effects? No, chill. no, not, not at all. So that, that was on, that was on uh, Saturday night Sunday morning yeah um, and then Monday come Monday morning I was I was back in work well um, you know no uh, no one would have believed that that you weekend had gone through that I've been in intensive care been there up to the life support machine yeah <laughs> um, not that you told them anyway no no that's it I kept it very quiet yeah um, there was a couple of uh, well it was on the the local news, um, yeah. and the, there was a few people got taken into hospital that weekend because there was a, a bad batch of ecstasy or super strong or something. Yeah, um, and it was on the front page of the, the newspaper. Um, but yeah, I don't think any, anyone else was back to work on, on Monday morning. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I, I guess that that's when you know I, I realised that that was my wake up call that I'd got. So close to, yeah, you know, the, the, losing it all. It could have all been all been over, um, and God had given me a, a second chance. Yeah. Uh, so that's when I, you know, thought I need to recommit my life um, to God and get things right. Yeah. Uh, and start walking with Him again. The problem was by that stage, I'd lost all contact with the any of my Christian friends, my local church. Yeah. Um, and the only friends in the network I had were, you know, from the uh, the partying and drinking and drug scene, I guess. Yes. So, uh, 
yeah, even then it, it you know, I, I kept, I mean, I never touched drugs again. That was, that was that. I kinda, I'd learned my lesson. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, the alcohol, you know, that just carried on. It was, uh, it was difficult to get back into church and really commit to God. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, after losing all that, the, the Christian network, I guess. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that carried on for quite, you know, quite some time until I did. I, I met my wife, um, Amy, just uh, literally, what, well, probably three or four months after that, um, you know, we, we uh, moved in together um, and then eventually we, uh, yeah, she got pregnant with our first, first kid, yeah. uh, Sky. And then after, yeah, once Sky was born, that's when uh, uh, I guess the, the, I came to the realization it's okay, you know, if I want to choose to, for me to live this lifestyle, but I know it's not the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, and having kids, uh, that was the real turning point where I thought, for their sake, I've got to start living life how I know I should live it. Um, and yeah, so I started, you know, going going back to church and and uh, took took it started taking Amy along. Cause Amy Amy the same. She come from a non non Christian background. Yeah. Um. So she she you know it was all very very new to her. Um. So yeah, but God was God was God was good, and uh, he brought brought Amy round. Um. Yeah, and we did. We started attend, attending church regularly. What sort of church was it? Yeah, it was a Pentecostal church. I went back to the went back to the church where we originally used to go when I was yeah, uh, yeah a, a kid growing up. Um, so yeah, we yeah, we went back to church and uh, I mean very very slowly uh, initially just to you know just to attend on Sundays. Yes. Uh, get children, you know, going to Sunday school mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, yeah, and just the, we weren't really heavily involved, but we were just going along and at least taking a little bit of interest in our Bibles, um, praying occasionally. Uh, you know, and things happen very, very slowly. Yeah. And I think probably the, the biggest uh, blessing, you know, uh, all the way, I mean, it was ridiculous really, but looking back now, even when I wasn't attending church, um, I was still, you know, Preaching to the to the boys when we went out, we sat in the pub, you know, drinking six pints, and I'd be yeah. telling them all about Jesus and the need to get saved, and um, you know, sending them YouTube videos yeah. to watch. <laughs> and you know, we'd be like, "All right, we'll all go to church on Sunday." Uh, and of course, it never happened because by the time we'd walk up, it were one o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> and <laughs> it was too late anyway. But I think even though you know, I was so far away from God, He always had His and on me, yeah, um, and uh, yeah, you know, he, ne he never, he never let me go, mm. um, and then even through that, even with Amy, I'd tell, I tell Amy, uh, you know, uh, all about God and Jesus, and she said, well, how can you, you know, you say all this, and then you out every weekend, it doesn't make sense, and I'm like, yeah. well, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not probably the perfect example to look at, but it is all true, and we need yeah. to start going to church. Um, and I, I, the, the big eye opener for, for Amy was my mum uh, went on a missions mission trip to, to China, and she she was smuggling uh, Bibles into China. Yeah. Um, and there was a, a a church event one night. And she was going to give a short testimony. Yes. So Amy was intrigued. She said, "I can't understand why why your mum would even do this. It didn't." You know what's the, what's the point? What's she doing it for? Yeah. <laughs> um, so we went went along to the to the um, uh, the church event so Amy could listen to my mum. Uh, and while we were there, the, we had a creations ministry guest as well. Mm -hmm. um, so after the after the service, uh, they did the 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 altar call, and um, yeah, Amy put a put her hand up and went forward. Yeah. Wow. Um, so yeah, so you know, God was God was good, and He brought That's us good. both, yeah, both, uh, both to Him. So yeah. yeah, it worked out well. And you both got baptized, or yeah, yeah, we got uh, we got baptized. There. So uh, after that, as we, I guess, as we started to grow in this Christian faith and have have kids, we had our, our second uh, child um, while we're still in the UK. Um, and then you got married as well. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we got married. Yeah. Um, 
And then, yeah, then we started to look at Australia, moving to Australia. And I guess that's when, uh, you know, Christian Walk really took off. We moved to Adelaide mm -hmm. um, with, uh, with work. Um, and we got, we went to a local church in, uh, in Adelaide. And the church was fantastic. You know, they, yeah. they really welcomed us with open arms, made us feel so welcome. Uh, and I guess coming out of that, uh, you know, environment when we've been, because all our friends were non-Christians and they were still living the, the party lifestyle and out drinking yeah. every weekend, uh, you know, being taken out of that situation and put in uh, a Christian environment uh, was just, yeah, such a massive blessing. And it yeah. kind of freed us of them change so they couldn't constantly get pulled back into that lifestyle. So, sure. um, yeah, and so we, we, that's really when we really grew. You know, we got involved in the church, started serving in the young adults ministry. Um, and I was fortunate to, there was uh, uh, the pastor there and um, really took me under his wing and started to disciple me. And I guess that's when I, you know, my Christian walk really started to, to take off and um, I, we started taking it more seriously yeah. and, uh, you know, pressing to God and trying to find who he is and what he wants for our lives. And yeah, um, yeah we've never, we've never looked back. Wonderful. So yeah, God's good. And then you went back to England. We did. Yeah. We, we, uh, we came to uh, Perth. Perth um, with to, work. With, with work. Yeah. What uh, does your wife do? Uh, she's a student at the minute. So she's, she's studying uh, teaching. So she's doing a teaching degree. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she was prominently looking after the, the, the children while we were in Adelaide, mm -hmm. uh, and then I moved to, to Perth with work. So with work was always in engineering? Yeah, 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 always engineering. Um, up until that stage, I'd always been in defence and the aerospace industry. Okay. Uh, when we came to Perth, I switched more to oil and gas. Naturally. So it was still, yeah, yeah. So it was still uh, mechanical side yeah. of things, but it was the oil and gas side rather than defense yeah um, and the same again we, we you know we got uh, I mean that was that was a miracle in itself we were searching around for a, a, a church to go so we just arrived in Perth we weren't sure uh, where where God were leading us um, went to a number of churches and we couldn't find anywhere that we thought felt like home um, and then we had some new new neighbors move into the house next door yes um, and I've been praying and fasting uh, you know, because I, I thought we desperately need to get into a church yes. where we feel God's called us to. So I've been on a, a three-day prayer and fast, and I was taking the, the rubbish out of the bin, um, and I just happened to bump into the new neighbour. So we got chatting, and um, uh, I mentioned the Lord, and he said that he was a pastor. <laughs> and he'd, he'd, he'd recently moved over from Canada. Yes. Um, he started pastoring a local church not far from us. Um, and that, you know, he invited us along that Sunday. That was in, in Perth? Or in you know? Perth, yeah. Okay. So we, we went along. Um, yeah, and that's the church we got involved with, the um, Ignite Church down at uh, oh, Myrie. Glenn Blingney. Yeah, we passed the Glen, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we, we, yeah, we got involved uh, there and uh, I started serving on the, uh, the eldership team and yeah. Amy was running the, the children's ministry. Nice. Um, so yeah, yeah, it was yeah, yeah, it was it was great just to be just to be serving and involved in the yeah, church again. Beautiful and, place. Yeah, it's uh, called uh, Velocity now. Velocity Church now. Yeah, yeah we passed a uh, uh, Richard guy. Yeah, nice guy. Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah, we, we were good good times. Um, and then I got I got transferred with work to. He's, he's just come to Australia, Glenn, or he's coming when this week. He is. Yeah, yeah, I believe he's in Melbourne at the minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, I saw it on uh, on social media. <laughs> yeah. Small world. Yeah, yeah. So I think he's, I think he's uh, planning on coming to Perth in the next next few weeks. So oh, great. Yeah, I look forward to, to catching up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then? And then, uh, then I got transferred to, to uh, Victoria with work, to regional yeah. Victoria in uh, Gippsland. That's when we lost you. That's when, that's when you lost me, yeah. <laughs> so up until then, I've been studying with uh, the uh, ASOM. Yes. Um, yeah, we're really enjoying the studies and getting so much, so much from it. And then we got transferred, I got transferred to, to uh, Victoria and um, 
Yeah, things were just difficult. It was very, very, very regional. Yeah. Uh, you know, the kids didn't settle at school. Um, uh, we were struggling, you know, with our, with our faith, not really having much much fellowship. Yeah. Um, yeah, and things just got really, really hard. Mm. So, um, yeah, that's, that's when we decided, well, you know, I think we lasted 18, 18 months or so. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then we decided, yeah, to go back, go back to the UK. So we we moved back to England, uh, and that was just before COVID struck. Mm. Um, so we've been in England probably oh, ten months or so. Yeah. Uh, and then the COVID pandemic started. Um, yeah, the world. Uh, yeah, the world changed. It did. <laughs> uh, but you were drawn back. Yeah. So we, we were there for two and a half years. And then you went to England? Uh, yeah, in England. Okay. Yeah, yeah uh, two and a half years in England. And then, uh, uh, yeah, we knew that we were, you know, we wanted to be in Australia, uh, particularly Perth. Um, so, yeah, probably oh, well, six, six months ago now. Um, yeah, we returned to Perth. Yeah. Uh, I, I was, yeah, fortunate to get, uh, to, get, to get work while I was still in the UK. So I, I came out first and... Got, got the job. Got, yeah, got the job. Got rented the nice. house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rented it out. Well, but we bought bought a house. Oh, you bought a house. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. Just bought um bought a house, uh, and then the kids came and joined me a couple of months ago uh, in Amy. Um, yeah, and all got settled in schools and. Awesome. Yeah, life's life's good. Praise God! This so, is the place to be. It is. How old are your children at the moment? Yeah, they 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 very well. Um, so they they help. They were 17, 16, and 11. Wow. Um, so, yeah, yeah the, the, the elders two are just finishing off their, the last uh, yeah. couple of years, now year 11, um, and doing their air tiles. They're not Where too are they? What's school are they? Uh, Swan, Swan Christian School. Swan Christian. Yeah. Wonderful. But uh, they've just finished the GCSEs in the UK, which is very similar to the air tiles. So, okay. they're having to do it all again, which not oh. too pleased about. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they'll be with it in the long run. <laughs> yeah, they'll they'll do well. Yeah, they'll probably fly through it anyway. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. They they're doing well so far. Yeah. So uh, yeah, That's yeah, great. very good. <laughs> what are your plans? What do you think the Lord is calling you to do? Obviously, you're finishing off your uh, bread dip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's I think next for Mark uh, Paul. Then? Um, I don't know. I, I I want to finish off my grad dip as soon as I can. Um, get that done, and then. Uh, you know, I'm just waiting on the Lord to see what doors He opens and in, in, uh, how I can serve. You know, I think the um, the priority is for me is to to, to walk in God's will. Yeah. I, I know that He's got you know plans for me. Um, I've made some numerous mistakes along the way, yeah. uh, and I think with hindsight, looking back, I can see the direction was God. God was leading me, uh, and I, I wasn't always obedient. Yeah. So. You know, this time I want to make sure that I'm I'm following his plan, following his yep. will, and yeah, seeing what what doors he leads me through. Um, what's what's your wife um, like? What's breathing inside of her in a sense? What's the Holy Spirit doing in her life? Um, yeah, so she she's uh, studying at the minute to to be a teacher. So she's doing a, a teaching degree, uh, and then she's got a real. Uh, a, Passion for you know the um, I get guess neglected children, so she wants to get in, involved in that side of things with the you know children's ministry, um, yeah, and do do that kind of work. So wonderful, yeah, it's exciting times. I think um, you know especially as the 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 kids are getting a little bit older now, um, you know it's it'd be interesting to see where God leads us and what what plans He's got for us. Possibly have a bit more time to, to get involved in ministry. And yeah, that's church. right. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, previously it's, it's the, the focus has always been to get the kids through school yeah. and, and um, I guess be a good father, whereas yeah. they're a bit more independent now. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be a while before I can completely get rid. <laughs> no, you're right. I, don't think, not, yeah, I yeah. don't think you can. No, that's right. I don't right. think you should either. No. <laughs> um, if there was a one word or a couple of words to define your life. How would you define your life until now? Oh, I think uh, um, an adventure. An adventure. Yeah, I think, you know, it, 
you only get one life. It's, yeah. it's too, um, you know, you've got to take a few risks and <laughs> live, live your life uh, to the max. Uh, and I think probably the good risk, not the bad risk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I probably am a bit of a risk, risk taker. You know, when we emigrated to Australia, um, yeah. we didn't know anyone here. We didn't, uh, uh, we'd never been to Australia. I've watched a couple of episodes of Home and Away and I thought, yeah, looks good. Yeah. So we, you know, we, we, we sold the house, we packed the bags, um, and we believed that this is where God was leaving us. Yeah. And, and people said, well, you, you're mad. You know, you, <laughs> of course you are. You, you've got two kids under 18 months. Um, you know, you're giving up your job, your house, your, uh, you know, you've got everything to go to Australia. Why? Nothing, yeah. And I thought, well, you know, you, why not? Why not? Yeah. <laughs> you only live once. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I, I, you know, that's the kind of attitude that I want to take for the for the future. Um, yeah. And, but, you know, calculated risk with God's leading. Yes. And, I, you know, I think if it's clear that that's the way that God's leading you, that's the plans that he's got, then it's, it's not necessarily a risk anyway. It's more that's of right. a... Adventure. More of an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's awesome to, to get adventurous. Well, the adventure will carry on, won't it? It will. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, you know, I'm, I'm Any looking... clues? What's that? Any clues to where the Lord uh, might take you? No, no, I'm not sure. I mean, I think uh, um, uh, eventually I'd like to, you know, be in full time ministry. That's the, uh, that's the, the, what's laid on my heart. Um, and I've had that, uh, prophesied over me quite quite a number of times and and the same with Amy so I think that's the that, that that's the route I'm going down yeah um, how I get there and how that happens and when that happens I don't know but um, you know I'm ready I, I'm ready ready for it that's great <laughs> so, yeah well thank you so much for sharing your adventurous story <laughs> yeah. life is an adventure you are right then yeah it's nice when the Lord takes us on his adventure it is. Because everything changes. Yeah. And it has changed for you. And it can change for our viewers out there and listeners. Yeah, wonderful. absolutely. Well, from a dead man on the <laughs> sidestep of a pub uh, to a minister of the gospel in Australia, what a life. Mark Bolden's life is a true testimony of what God can do in the life of anyone. I don't know your story or, to, or the story of some people that you know. Uh, maybe people have given up on you, maybe you have given up on other people. Let me tell you that there is still hope while there's life, there is still hope God can turn everybody around no matter how low they have fallen. And uh, by hearing this amazing story, you can see what God can do in restoring lives. I really pray that this inspires you to carry on the good fight and keep inspiring others as well. And share this content, share this story with others, let others be encouraged and be strengthened in their walk as well. We look forward to catching up with you next time at Kingdom Stories from Down Under. I am Nathaniel. Thank you for joining us on Kingdom Stories from Down Under. We'd love it if you would subscribe, rate and share these stories with your wider community. And remember, every story is worth sharing, including yours.